everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you my post-apocalyptic Disney series of Merida from Brave. So if you'd like to see how I did this, just keep on watching. So starting off, I just applied liquid latex all around the area where I want the um, wounds to be. The wounds are meant to be like the claw marks of a bear because in this post-apocalyptic scenario, like the witch that ended up giving Merida the cake to give to her mom that turned her into a bear, like her house got raided and a bunch of people ate like some of her potions or cake or whatever and turned into wild beasts and attacked everybody. So uh, I'm just applying the liquid latex all over the side of my face where I want the marks to be. If you've never used liquid latex before, do a patch test to see if you have any adverse reactions before doing what I'm doing here. And yeah, I'm just applying that all and then I'm putting more in the centermost part of um, the area because I want that part to be thicker because I'm going to be ripping it open later. And I want the outer edges to be a little thinner so that it blends in with my skin better. And then I just set all that with some translucent powder. That's the Cody Aerospun one. And then this is where I am ripping the marks. I wanted the center uh, one to be a little longer and then the two ones on the side to be a little um, more staggered so it wasn't just three straight marks in a uniform. Because if you think about it, when you look at your, ha your hand, I mean, your fingers are different lengths. And uh, same with claw marks on like animals, like their claws are in different like uh, positions on their paw. So when they scratch on stuff, it would be in staggered um, sections instead of just like completely straight across, if that makes any sense. But yeah, I'm just ripping it and then I'm pulling it into like a cut kind of uh, line, like where I'm splitting it and then pulling downward and upward to kind of make it more like oval instead of a completely circular. And for those of you who are interested, I'm going to be doing mini tutorials on my TikTok with uh, just some really simple, basic uh, special effects stuff, like little cuts, bruises, things like that, that are gonna be simple and easy to do. And I'm going to have those on my TikTok. And I'm gonna start probably doing them tomorrow, like leading all the way up, not every single day leading up to Halloween, but you know, a few times a week leading up to Halloween. Just, yeah. So if you're interested in that, you could go and check that out. I did accidentally rip that last one a little too far, so I just added a little liquid latex to the side so I could peel that side up once it dried. And then uh, while that was all finishing drying and all that, I, oh yeah, I had put foundation all over my face and set all that. And then I'm just using the water activated face paint from Snazaroo in the shade orange. And I'm just using that to fill in my brows. First, I'm just using a brush to fill in my brows, and then I go in with a spoolie with some of the uh, water-activated paint on it, and then I run it through my brow hairs so that it coats my brow hairs and um, makes my brows not brown like they normally are. <laughs> you see it here, and I'll just do that, and it actually just makes it all one uniform color, so that's a pretty good tip if you're looking to color in your brows, but then you have darker brow hair like myself and want to use a lighter color. And then for eyeshadow, I went in with the Morphe... Oh my goodness, why can't I remember what this is called? <laughs> um, 35, oh, 3502. Yes, I think that's right. Uh, palette, and then I took that shade. I'm just running it into my crease and all over my lid and then also on my lower lash line. If you want to see me do a look with this palette, I actually might be doing using this palette for my um, rainbow series. I'm doing a rainbow slash rainbow elf series coming up, which is going to be like two looks in one type deal. So yeah, I might be using that for orange. And then I went to the Pro Fusion Brow Palette and I took the shade Soft Brown and I'm using that to create freckles all along the bridge of my nose and then kind of fading out toward my cheeks because looking at reference photos of Merida, she does have freckles right in the center of her face that kind of just disperse out, but mostly uh, based along her bridge of her nose. And I'm just dotting those little um, dots all over, not in any uniform pattern because freckles aren't really uniform. And then I just use my finger and I kind of tap it lightly into the powder and foundation that's already on my face. It kind of makes it less, less harsh and a little more realistic. I'm feeling so hollow. Don't you know? Don't you know? And then I'm taking this pinky blush shade from the Cover FX Face Perfect Perfector Face. Face Perfector, one of those palette. And I'm just using that and putting that on the side of my face where I did not do the wounds because I really, like, I'm not going to do it on the other side because that's just be, going to be covered with stuff anyway. 
And then I do end up going in with the contour shade um, from that same palette. And I do use that to contour my um, jawline. I did not contour that one side of uh, my cheekbone because uh, Merida has a more round face and not as angular. And I have uh, somewhat high cheekbones. And that already gives you know, like myself a nice contour as it is. And I didn't really want to uh, emphasize that any more than it was. And then I went to the CC Beauty Cream Paint Palette and I took this brown shade and I'm using that to first um, create a shadow on the outer perimeter of those wounds and then kind of dragging it inward a little. And uh, I really need to clean that palette. It's disgusting how much I uh, mix on top of it. I, yeah, and I really need to update my description boxes. Oh my goodness, someone needs to get on me about that because I don't know. I like some of the time I don't even know if like people care because they don't seem like they care because I never get uh, comments asking like specific names of stuff. I don't know. I really want to update it though because I have all of it like written down of the stuff that I used. I just need to like put it in the actual description boxes to do so. But yeah, I'm just doing that with all three of the cut wounds. I'm living in shadow. Don't you know? And then I'm going into the red shade and I'm putting that in the center part of the uh, wounds and then tapping it out and blending it into the brown with my finger. And then I'm using the smallest amount of black to just deepen up these shadows on the perimeters of the wounds a little further. And um, I have one more look in this series that I already filmed. It's going to be Rapunzel. That is going to be coming next Tuesday. This coming Friday, I have a, what do I have? <laughs> I have a look, oh yeah, like a shot my stash look. And it, I mean, it didn't turn out 100% like I was hoping it would. It turned out okay. But you know, I decided I'm going to post it anyway because like I'm going to post like, not everything's going to be perfect every time. But then I just put more of that red on a um, blending brush and I just tap this all around the wounds to uh, give it like an irritated skin appearance to it. And then after the Rapunzel look next Tuesday on that Friday, I'm going to be reviewing the ColourPop It's My Pleasure palette, I believe it's called, which I actually filmed today. And then the following Tuesday after that is going to be the red look in my Rainbow Elf series. So yeah, I have a bunch of stuff planned. I have it all like mapped out for like months to come, which is like, seems slightly neurotic. I hope it's not. It's just, I like to plan and organize. And then going in with the Mehron Stage Blood in the shade Dark Venus, I'm just using a Q-tip to apply this on the perimeters of my wounds. That is where I'm putting most of the blood because that's probably where most of the blood would pool in an open wound. And then I'm just uh, dabbing it in the actual center of the wound a little and that, I'm just having it mostly concentrated on the perimeters and then dragging it outside of the wound a little because some of the blood would have gotten on your skin. That's not the actual wound itself. So yeah, I just do this with all three of them. And um, this blood uh, does not dry down. It is like a syrup based blood. So it will not dry. So it will, if you add too much, it will start to drip. So that is just fair warning to anybody who's never used this, who might want to use it in the future. That is something that would, you know, be good to know because it did drop, drip down on my dress. <laughs> I don't know if it stained it because uh, I haven't checked. I mean, I did wash it, but I can't recall. I didn't check after it got out of the dryer if it actually stained or not. So, I mean, I'll let you know if I remember. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just using um, and putting some blood everywhere. Yep. What did I know? What did I know? I fell for And then finally for lips, I went in with this AYC, N AYC, NYC chunky lip pencil. It's like a peachy toned color. And I just put a little on my lips and kind of blend it out just to give my lips a little color, not too much. But yeah, that is pretty much the end of this video. So if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you aren't already or if you want to. And I guess I'll see you in my next one.